Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is a 100 day update for Nathaniel, or AKA Nato for most of you, if you have not seen the, the name reveal video. Um, yeah, so he just had his 100 day yesterday. I'm actually on my way to take him to the pediatrician because his skin is super duper crazy dry, like to the point that it's flaking and peeling. He, it doesn't seem to really bother him, which is a good thing, but it just doesn't look comfortable. And then plus his strawberry, what I thought was his strawberry birthmark at the back of his neck, it looks a little bigger and it's starting to look a little angry. I'm thinking it's probably eczema. I just want to make sure, so that's why we're off to his pediatrician. Now, um, it's actually, you know what, let's make this more of a life update. So things have been pretty chaotic and a bit sad too. I mean, it's been laced with some beautiful and wonderful and super duper happy moments. But overall, the past couple of weeks has been pretty, you know, kind of like heartbreakingly sad in our in our yuck household. Um, our beloved Tofu, who is my 13 year old Jack Russell Terrier, We've had him since he was like six or eight weeks old. He wasn't feeling so well after the Christmas holidays. We had him on my in-laws while we were away in Montreal visiting my grandma. And the issue was that he didn't really seem to have much of an appetite. So he was losing weight. So he got blood work done and we thought it was just, um, you know, possibly a infection in his liver, like acute hepatitis, I think they've had called it. And so he was on two broad spectrum antibiotics and acids and um, we were doing assisted feeding since he wasn't willing to eat. With that being done, after about a week, week and a half, his weight did perk up. So, and his energy level was better. And so we're like, yes, that's great, amazing. I thought the antibiotics were working. And he had his replete blood work done about a week-ish later after the first um, diagnosis. And it was great, like really, really great. So his bilirubin levels, which is, um, levels uh, it's like a liver level I think they said and I mean mind you I don't know too much about medical stuff so I mean I'm just trying to reiterate what I remember with the vet telling me with the fact that I am pretty sleep deprived still and it's just been a bit of a blur with everything that's going on so his bilirubin levels, which should normally be between 10 to 15, the first set of tests, it came back 100 something, which is really, really high. But then the second set of tests, when we thought he was doing better because his energy level was better, he's he was much more alert, hydrated and everything, uh, it came back in the 200s, which is near, near, well, it, it, it's like life-threatening. So the bilirubin levels is also what causes the skin to go yellow, which um, is the indicator of jaundice. Now, I never knew that dogs could get jaundice. So if you are a pet owner, make sure you look at their gums when you do like monthly checks for them. Take a look at their gums. If their gums look a little orangey, it could be the first signs of um, like liver issues and also the whites of their eyes. Like I mean, normally I would just pry open my dog's eyes to look at the weight of his eyes, but his teeth, his gums I do look at, but I never really noticed that it was turning yellow. So then after we got the test results, I ended up, um, we, we decided to go get him a rush ultrasound. I ended up calling a bunch of different um, clinics and I accidentally ended up calling this other vet clinic that I thought was an ultrasound place. The owner was so incredible, so kind. And I mean, at first he, he kind of like, not really brushed me off, but he, he, he didn't, he wasn't impressing me at all because I was like, oh, I'm trying to see if I can book an appointment for an ultrasound for my dog. And he's like, well, why would your vet tell me? I didn't realize he was just a regular vet clinic where he could bring in an ultrasound technician. And he was like going back and forth about, you know, how I'm so far away from where he's located, da 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 da. And I said, I'm just trying to save my dog. And I broke down in tears. And I just, I was like crying on the phone. I think that's really softened him up. But then he ended up spending like a good 20 minutes on the phone with me, and maybe even not close to half an hour, just talking me through the blood work analysis that I got. And he even called, I think, two different um, clinics to see whether or not he could book an appointment for me or bring in an internal specialist for me down to his place, which was so, so, so kind. And it is all free charge. I mean, it was just really, really kind of him. So um, with that being said, he told me that, you know, the prognosis does look grim. I do have to, you know, be emotionally prepared for the news, but he wished us best of luck. I 
end up calling um, the referral hospital, referral clinic up north in Newmarket, and um, they were able to fit me in basically three days earlier than anyone else. So automatic, like right away, I took the appointment. It was only going to be like a day or so away from when I was calling. I took that appointment. We went. They were really nice. The clinic is gorgeous. <laughs> it was so funny. I equated to the pet version of Grey's Anatomy because I was met with a vet, vet assistant, a fourth year vet medical student, an intern, and the specialist. So it literally felt like Grey's Anatomy, but for my fur baby. Uh, and so we had the consultation and um, they gave me all these options. We stick, uh, feed a tube through his nose into his stomach, plus put him on IV, keep him in overnight, and do an ultrasound plus clotting and um, some other stuff. Like Tofu's 13. I didn't, I didn't want to put him through unnecessary stress and I know him being away from home in a weird, strange air place where he doesn't understand the smells, he doesn't know the smells, doesn't know anyone there with tubes all over him and inserted in him would be so stressful for my poor boy and I didn't want to do that to him. So basically we decided to, Nelson and I, we were on the phone for about an hour just like bawling our eyes out. Um, and so we decided to move forward with the ultrasound just to get a um, get some answers. Um, because honestly, I don't think Tofu would survive a surgery. We did the ultrasound, and you know, like how how you are emo emotionally and mentally prepared to hear the worst, but you have that slight little tiny glimmer of hope that is going to be something good, like some sort of good news. But it wasn't the case. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it turns out that his gallbladder can't drain because there's this mass on his pancreas and it has spread to his lymph nodes and everything indicates that he has pancreatic cancer. So there, he's not a candidate for surgery. Chemo may or may not do anything. So they, their suggestion was to put him down the next day and um, I got him some medications to make him comfortable. We brought him home, we had big huge snuggles and Nelson and I we talked more and we decided that as long as Tofu still shows us he's fighting and he has a will to live, we're going to take it day by day. And if he looks like he's uncomfortable and he doesn't want to go for his walks anymore, he doesn't want his treats, he doesn't want snuggles, he doesn't want to be around us or surprise, then we know it's time to let him go. And at that time, we'll let him go. Because if he still has a zest for life right now, I do not see the point in putting my baby down. Like, it, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. And I spoke with um, someone at the vet clinic too, and she said yes, she agrees with me. It's not something we should rush into, but just keep an eye on on how he's doing because things could progress really quickly so I mean they called a couple of times to see how he's doing so I mean they're being really 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 you know on top of things and they're being really nice about it and of ultimately they are looking out for Tofu's best interest that's Tofu and that's Tofu's story we're just taking it one day literally one day at a time he's being immensely spoiled like immensely spoiled and uh, just giving him whatever he wants to eat, whatever he wants to do. He's been allowed to sleep on the bed again. <laughs> I'm actually allergic to tofu. I, when I touch his skin, I break out in hives. And so <laughs> after he slept on the bed, I took a nap and I woke up covered in hives with like super duper itchy eyes and red eyes. It was kind of funny. So I mean, one day at a time, really one day at a time. And we're just taking lots of pictures, lots of videos and just really, Hope, just trying to help him enjoy whatever time he has left and make the best of it. It could be a couple days, it could be a couple weeks, could be a couple months, you don't know, right? So in the meantime, we're doing everything we can for him. And that's that. 
Uh, everything else on the home front, <clears throat> Nelson and Jennifer are both sick. Uh, it was actually uh, the Daniels 100 day also coincided with our wedding anniversary. It's our eight year wedding anniversary. And so we obviously did not do anything yesterday except for nurse poor Nelson, nurse poor Ginevra, and nurse poor Tofu, and while well, I'm literally nursing my son. So we will celebrate our anniversary a little bit later on. At the end of this week, it is Lunar New Year's, and my mom is, we're supposed to go out for dinner, but because I refuse to leave Tofu alone by himself in the house for a lengthy period of time, we will probably end up doing something at my house. And I will either buy takeout or I will try to attempt to cook something interesting that is like Chinese New Year's ish. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll go from there. So that's pretty much the life update. Nathaniel is four, just over 14 pounds now, which is so funny because he is this actually a little bit bigger than Ginevra was when she was one year old. Yeah, one year old. So. He's a big boy. I'm going to take him to see his pediatrician and then I will update you on what's going on with my poor baby's skin condition. Say hi. 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 Can you say hi? Hi. Yeah, hi. Are you saying hi? The pediatrician's appointment, it went quite well basically he has really bad eczema and the little red mark at the back of his neck it is in fact a strawberry birthmark and apparently they can travel they can like go to different places and even adults can get them um it's just that it's kind of like gross looking because there's a slight like the beginnings of a skin infection so we got some fusidin and we need to use that for five days and if i noticed any other yellowing of his skin like uh kind of like yucky infection type of a thing to put it on again for five days so the other thing is um i want to be trying another kind of moisturizer and see how that goes for him it'll be the same one that you never used when she was little but she was a little bit older than three months when i uh, started her on that one so we'll see how that one goes yeah i'm starting to train again for dance and <laughs> the first week i was so sore i was sore for like three days so hopefully that will get a little bit better. We'll go from there. So I'm going to end the vlog for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on this 100 days slash tofu update. And we'll see you in the next one. All right, if you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little bell icon beside it so you never miss a video notification. Until next time, bye. Can you say bye? Bye. Yes, these are socks on his hands. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.